Alright everybody, uh, this is Chuck, and we're going to pick up where the, the left one, the, the last video left off, excuse me, uh, with the Metasploit and the Reverse TCP. Um, again, showed you that one to, to show when a user is logged in as administrator uh, by downloading uh, just the right file, uh, in, in our case uh, the reverse shell. Uh, we were able to pretty much do whatever we wanted to on their machine. Uh, we were able to do screenshots. We were able to start a key logger to grab everything that they typed in. We were able to create our own user account uh, as an administrator and put ourselves in the administrator group. We were av even able to pull their SAM file uh, so we could get all their hash dumps. Uh, the only thing that that I didn't show was the exploit that we wrote, and we just called it hacked. Uh, when the user clicked on it from a website, it didn't do anything. The user didn't see anything, so therefore they're not quite sure what just happened. They, they double-clicked an executable and nothing happened. What I'm going to show you this time is how we can take that executable and wrap it inside of another executable to where they can see something happen but our exploit will still run. So again the last video was to show that no user should be logged in as administrator. They should be standard users. Even yourself as a security uh, analyst should really shouldn't be logged in as administrator on your machine unless you're doing things that require administrator privileges then if somebody does break into the machine it's much harder to go from standard user to admin than it is to go from admin to system. So in this case I'm showing this one uh, just to show that you gotta be careful where you download software from. It doesn't matter what it says it doesn't mean that's what it is. If you want SQL Express download it from Microsoft. If you want Kali Linux download it from Kali.org. You know, if you want Photoshop, download it from Adobe. Download it from the vendors who originally made it, not from all the 100 sites who also have copies of it, because you never know what's going to be attached to it. Also be careful if you use torrent sites and things like that. Scan the things before you install it. Doesn't mean it's going to catch it, but you'll be a little bit safer. So I'm just going to do something very simple here. Um, this is our exploit that we wrote and I just have calc here I'm not going to do any big monster install file but we're going to put these two together and I'm going to call it like super calc I'm going to use a program and I'm, I'm using the XP box again I could I could have done this on 7 I just had my XP box up and running um, but we're going to use a program that is that comes with Windows it's called iExpress so you can just go to you can just go to your run box and just type in iExpress. We're going to create a new self extraction directive. We're going to extract the files and run them, and we're going to type in our name here. So we, we're going to call it SuperCalc. You can prompt them. No, we're not going to prompt them with anything. We don't have a display license. But we are going to add, if you have a display license, it's actually uh, pretty cool. Um, looks a little bit more realistic. But there's both of our files. The install program is going to be calc. The post command is going to be our exploit. We can keep it as default for the extraction. We'll just tell them that it's super calc. Uh, super calc successfully installed and we're gonna save this on the desktop and call it super calc and we don't need to restart and we don't need to save our steps There you go, and then we finish it. There's our file. Okay, so we don't need these two. 
Now I do have the UAC up and running, uh, so I do have to um, actually just open this. I can just open it. I'm going to start my exploit here. So my payload handler is sitting there waiting for the file to be installed. And I'm just going to open it. Now you can also do a you know run as you know we can run as administrator. Just takes a minute or so. And we could even double click it. Okay. And it will run. So there is is calculator there. So they did see something happen. And you see now that I am sending the stage. It takes, it takes a little bit longer. I didn't have to close it, but I actually closed it. Uh, it takes a little bit longer for the payload to to come over, especially when calculator opens. I'm surprised I hadn't got my little dialog box, so I didn't save a little dialog box. Uh, but there we go. So they did see something open. Now, of course, this wasn't a true install. If it was an install, it would show up here. We could do a Wireshark. But they actually double clicked it and they saw the program open. Yeah. Double click it, they see it decompress, they see it open. And we're connected. So if we do a get UID, there's the machine. So it was the same thing that we did before, except for all we did, we wrapped it inside of another program. Now there is a good thing about it not being a uh, self-installer, because they'll keep this file around. Every time they double click it, if say if we would have done something a little bit more fancy with this, every time they double click it, they will reinstall our exploit, because our exploit is part of this. So you can keep it on the desktop, and then when you're finished with a session and you log out of the session, you can keep a session up and running. Every time they launch this program, even after a reboot, they launch the program again, just as long as you have the listener going, you are now reconnected to them. And you can still do everything that we did last time. You can take screenshots. We could do key scans, we can do hash dumps. Yeah, we can clear their event viewer. And there's tons of things we can do. You can always type in help for more things you can do. There's your hash dump, get system. Yeah. Webcams. There's the key scans that we ran. Enumeration. You can even shut them down. So there's a lot of stuff you can do that's uh, it's kind of fun. In fact, since it's since it's time to go, we'll just log them off. <laughs> now, of course, when you log them off, the session will be closed. So make sure if you do something like that, that you do have a persistent connection. But again, if this machine does come back up, if they double click SuperCalc again, and you're in listening mode, you will get another session started. So that's a quick little down and dirty of how to package up um, one of your files into another file by using iExpress, uh, and how you can shut down a remote machine just for kicks. All right. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. You can subscribe to the channel. I'm uh, going to be posting right many of these uh, in the near future. Uh, let me know if there's anything that, uh, that you'd like to see. I'd be glad to post it. All right. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.